The chair calls Josh Masters, Ellen Sweet, <coughs> Daniel Rosa, Kathy De Argenet, Bonnie Van Cleric, Janet Longmore. The next panel to be up after this panel will be David Rosa, Vivian Ballard, Michelle Thompson, Julie Klusnick, Derek Rich, and Amy Donovan. Mr. Masters? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. My name is Josh Masters. Hey, excuse me, just pull that microphone over so it's in your, right, there you go. My name is Josh Masters. My uh, representative is Tom, Tommy Williams. I'm from Montgomery County. Uh, I am in support of this bill. Today I'm not speaking on women's rights, rather the right of those that cannot speak. I know there are arguments on both sides of this issue. The sacred liberties and rights that we have, uh, now possess were given to us by those who gave their lives for them. When we choose to take the rights of the innocent unborn, we become the oppressors that we as Americans have always fought against. I have talked to people on both sides of the aisle and have realized we are all human beings. We enjoy many of the same things and are so alike in many ways. But an issue like this is not preference, it's not like or taste. It is an issue of right or wrong. I cannot force my convictions on anyone, but I hope and pray that we will all be able to step back from our own convictions and the convictions of others, that we will overlook our rights and see what is right. For that is where our true liberty comes from. Just because it is legal does not make it right. As I sat here and listened to the senators questioning Senator Hager's bill, all I heard from supposed pro-lifers were questioning about questions about the mother's safety. But why are you not defending the unborn? Just because it cannot feel doesn't mean it's not alive. In the cases of rape, why would you then approve a worse violence of murder? The overwhelming majority of abortions that take place are not from the case of rape, rather of irresponsible and unintentional choices that we the living make. We should not be making the innocent unborn suffer for choices we make. If we condemn the innocent to death, God have mercy on us, the guilty. Also, I hear all the statistics about how safe it is, but for every safe abortion, there is a fatality. You ask for evidence that the baby can feel at 20 weeks. <clears throat> My wife is 20 weeks pregnant as we speak, and if she can feel that baby moving, I don't see how you can entertain the idea that the baby can't feel either. Thank you. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank Ellen, you. sweet. Thank you. I'm here representing myself, my daughter, my mother, and the childhood friend who died from a botched abortion. My mother had her abortion when I was two years old. Her, my father had just started a new business, and she wanted to be part of making it grow. It was her choice. I am the mother of a wonderful daughter. I almost didn't have her. I, had, I was standing on the porch of the doctor's office to have an abortion, and I said, I can't do it. And she's here today having joined me in opposing this bill because I had a choice. Opal Brown, who died, who bled to death, when we were 15 years old because she didn't feel she could talk to anyone about terminating her pregnancy. Felt she didn't have a choice. You have a choice. And if we could only put a block up between the intersection of governments and religious conviction, we could move further along. I do not support or oppose abortion. I think it should be a person's choice. But this business of the church dictating what voter elected officials do really offends me. And I think it does not advance us as a society or as a culture. Thank you. Thank you. Ellen, of oh, your own, please. Daniel Rosa? Good afternoon. My name is Daniel Rosa. I am testifying for myself and for in support of Senate Bill 1. I am 16 and a potential voter in San Antonio, specifically Senate District 26. Growing up as a Roman Orthodox Catholic, Orthodox meaning 
the adherence to all the teachings of the church. I frequently went to pro-life events. Of course, as a younger child, I didn't understand the meaning of abortion, of the harm, the effects, or the pain. As I grow older, I choose to learn about the destructive acts of abortion. I stand for life for my brothers and sisters to have a chance to be loved. As much as we affect them, they affect us. I have heard others pro-life testimonies of their struggle and loss, but the testimony that impacts me the most is my dad's. My father told me why my older brother was named David II. If my dad is David Sr., why not David Jr.? I understand now that David Jr. never made it to this world. His love for my eldest brother and his bravery to explain his loss illustrates to me to come before you today. Furthermore, there is a commercial saying that we are imperfect beings living in an imperfect world. I love that commercial. Even though this is an imperfect world, it does not mean that we stand aside and watch this world flee from the love of the creator of all men and women, boys and girls, born and unborn. God made us to form his world into a place for persons to know, to love, and to serve him as best we can, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. My request is to you that you do not vote on this bill because of some law written on paper, but vote on it because of the law in your hearts. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. Do you list your title as student? You are 16? Yes. Good testing. Very articulate. Thank you. Impressed. Um, Kathy D. Argenio. Thank you. Go ahead. I am Kathy D. Argenio. Here in Austin, Kurt Watson is my senator. I believe in being proactive and not reactive, and I don't believe SB1 is proactive. I oppose this bill. <clears throat> if women's health is honestly your concern, we would be here now talking about funding for these clinics. This bill is targeting these clinics as unsafe and not up to your standards. These clinics are also providers of preventative health care and family planning, not only clinics that help a woman terminate her pregnancy. I, for one, have visited these clinics you deem unfit to provide services for birth control, cancer screenings, and routine health checkups. I am a single mother of three and of the working poor this is where I go for my women's health services. I have also terminated a pregnancy. I have been witnessing this procedural hearings for the past three weeks and was part of the Right to Choose group in the gallery of the filibuster. I have also now been witnessing the line crossed over between church and state. And with that, I am finding it harder to find the premise of this bill. Again, I ask if you are honestly concerned about the health of women going to these clinics to terminate their pregnancy, why not fund the upgrades needed for what you consider appropriate ambulatory and surgical care? Women will ch continue to choose to terminate a pregnancy regardless of what bill you pass. History is here to remind us of that. And as far as those little shoes that were put up, I know a few children who could use those that are alive today. Thank you, Ms. Bolton. Dargenio. No, Ms. Zin Clark. Thank you. Go ahead. Hi. Yes, I'm a body of Clark, and I'm representing myself. Um, I live in uh, Senator Kirk Watson's district and I'm here to support uh, Senate Bill 1. Um, the Texas uh, Hospital Association has stated that the legislation requiring um, these abortion clinics uh, to have hospital admitting privileges is not appropriate or, and unnecessary. I believe Tanya Reeves screams from her grave wanting, to know, wanting you to know that this legislation may have saved your life if the abortionist would have had admitting privileges. Tanya lived in Chicago, and she bled to death from a botched abortion from a Planned Parenthood clinic. 
The emergency room physician, James Anderson, said that in his 30 years of experience, the abortion clinics never inform him about their patient's condition. This should be a crime, and it needs to stop. This legislation is not a political position. It's about women deserving higher health standards than the status quo. Thank you. Janet Longmore. Thank you. Uh, my name is Janet Longmore. I am from Denton, and Senator Nelson, I'm one of yours. Many years in the education industry, so thank you for keeping things moving today. It's, thank you. It's a tough job. Thank you. It's a tough job. Uh, Senator Hager, you and I have our good intentions, I hope, you know, in common. Senator Zaffarini, Senator Uresti, you've asked a lot of the questions that I had in my mind. Primarily, I want to make the point that people in orange shirts here are not in favor of abortion. No one is in favor of abortion. I want my children to grow up in a world where no one is raped, there is no incest, there are no diseases that might cause danger to the mother. And what we are doing in this bill addresses none of those things. The way to prevent abortions is to prevent the pregnancies. The bill does nothing to prevent pregnancies. If you remove the clinic that provides the contraception, you will create more pregnancies, which will necessitate, in these women's minds, more abortions. I don't feel that this bill is logical. I don't feel it's constructive or productive, and I think it's wasting our time. As far as the uh, upgraded uh, standards, make those standards apply to urology clinics, doc dental clinics, vasectomies, <laughs> cosmetics procedures, erectile dysfunction clinics. They've got billboards all over the highway. Make them all follow these standards. And I'll be behind you all the way. But to single out women's clinics uh, is, I think, a, uh, an error of, of major proportions. You're causing a problem that you will then have to deal with. Uh, and the cute little shoes, they make a point, Senator Duell. I, I agree. That's a very emotional point. But I'd rather see those shoes go to some little children who need them now and have the pregnancies that might have resulted in those children never happen. That will make a better Texas when we're free to know that we don't have the pregnancies in the first place. What are you going to do about that, Senator? Thank you very much. Thank you to this entire panel. If you'd exit out that door. <laughs>